Hi, I'm Brianna, and this is Decoding Physiology. This is a series from Decoding DX, where we focus on understanding the physiology behind various states and diseases that we see in patients, because we believe that if you understand the why, then you will learn for the long term and be able to make better decisions for your patients. Today is part one of a multi-part series on metabolic alkalosis. We decided to divide this into multiple shorter videos because metabolic alkalosis can get pretty complicated, and we wanted to make it easier to digest and let you go at your own pace. First, let's start off with some definitions. Now it's important to note that normal ranges are just that, ranges. And we create cutoff values for the sake of definitions. But in general, an alkalosis is a serum concentration of bicarbonate greater than 30 milliequivalents per liter. And an alkalemia is an arterial pH of greater than 7.45. You can have an alkalosis without an alkalemia if you also have an acidosis going on. And then I've listed here various different abbreviations that I'll be using throughout this presentation. These are pretty standard definitions, but just to make sure that we're not confusing, here they are. To start out, basic labs. These are the main electrolytes that we look at in the basic metabolic panel. We have the sodium, chloride, and bicarbonate, and then unmeasured anions and cations that aren't as big contributors. But it's important to know that the total positive and total negative are equal to each other for electroneutrality. In the state of alkalosis, there's an increase in the amount of bicarbonate, and then there's a parallel decrease in the amount of chloride. Now, it's important to note that the sodium will not change a whole lot in proportion to the chloride. If the sodium goes down in proportion to the chloride, you're more likely looking at a water disorder, like a hyponatremia situation, not an alkalosis. But you can have both of these at the same time. So in general, alkalosis is going to have the higher bicarbonate a lower chloride, and most alkalotic processes have a slightly increased anion gap for various different reasons relating to the different processes that create the alkalosis. But this also means that the relative decrease in chloride is going to be even greater to keep electroneutrality. Alrighty, so this is a giant chart. It's super intimidating. We're going to work through it one piece at a time in each video of this series. So we'll break it down and by the time we're done with this, it'll make more sense. To start off with, we're gonna talk about the state of hypokalemia or low potassium in the blood. So let's say this is a normal state. The proportions of ions that I have here are not necessarily reflective of true values in the blood, but let's just say that these proportions are the normal state in the blood. One of the major ion transporter in our cells is the hydrogen potassium exchanger. Directionality of which way this pump works depends on the cell type and the context in which the cell is working. It can run by the concentration gradient created by other pumps, or it can run on ATP, again, depending on the cell type and function. For example, there's a hydrogen potassium pump in the stomach that runs on ATP to pump hydrogen out against its concentration gradient. But let's say instead that we're in a state of hypokalemia. In this state, the hydrogen potassium pumps are going to try and help compensate for this hypokalemia, and more will be recruited than normal they're going to work overboard to try and help fix and replace extra potassium in the blood to maintain approximately normal homeostatic levels. But the amount of bicarbonate in the blood has not changed. So we still have the four pieces of bicarbonate in this example in the blood. But because of the compensatory action from the hydrogen potassium pump, some of that hydrogen has shifted into the cells, leaving less relative amount in the blood. When we compare this to the ratio of what we had in the normal state, we see that there's less hydrogen for the same amount of bicarbonate, which leads to the state of an alkalosis. This is going to be an important component of various different causes of metabolic alkalosis as we move on in the series. Check out part two for the next step in understanding metabolic alkalosis.